So today we're going to learn about genetic engineering and germline cells. So these are the things you need to know. So what are germline cells? Those are sex cells, those are your sperm and your egg cells. Uh, ethics, that's the moral principles that govern your everyday life. An embryo, an unborn or unhatched offspring in the process of development. It's before a fetus. So it's normally like that two to eight week period, which is when all these tests are going to be being completed. PGD is what people know I've heard of pre-implementation genetic diagnosis as. And that is when you take um, some embryos in a petri dish and you test them for diseases that you know the parents have. That way you can figure out if they're going to have some pretty debilitating diseases and they destroy the embryos that are not, that have those diseases and are not ideal. Infanticide is when babies are already born and if they have a disability such as Down syndrome or in some cases if they're a girl, they are killed like after they're born. That's a kind of an ancient method but still happening today a little bit. Alleles are the like brown hair and blonde hair are uh, an example of an allele. It's two different traits of the same gene. And CRISPR is a set of DNA uh, base pairs but it's also sometimes referred to as a technology that uses CRISPRs, so that's a common misconception. Genetic engineering is a deliberate modification of characteristics of an organism. So some parts of genetic engineering, uh, you modify the genetic material, that's like your DNA base pairs. Characteristics, you do that by modifying the base pairs, like making them a taller kid, making a boy or a girl, etc. So practical uses of this are if you know that you have like four boys and you want a girl, you can make it so you have a girl, and then that way it also makes it so that you don't destroy any embryos because it's done in a lab where only the embryos desired are created. And then some ways it's used are in making like eugenics, which is like making people like the way you want them, not necessarily just like better, but just like the way that you desire them to be. That's kind of like what Nazism got into. So that's, that's kind of the downfall of this possible technology. So there's an ethical debate surrounding this technology. It's, there's basically two sides. It's their proponents of it and people who are against it. The people who are against it normally have religious reasons behind it. It's kind of similar to the abortion debate, where it's like, when does an embryo become a person? Is that a conception? Is that at birth? Is that somewhere in between? And then if, that, if you believe that somebody's a person, then it comes into the autonomy of an individual, where they have the right to decide what they want their genes to be. So you can't modify them for them, it just makes it so that you have to respect their right to choice. Genetic diversity comes into play a lot, so if everybody decides that blonde hair is what they want, well this is an extreme example, it's, then there's no more brown hair left in the human populace, and it gets, makes us more susceptible to disease. This would happen more with like, if everybody wanted like A-type blood, it would make it so that everybody is more susceptible to diseases that attack the blood. And then safety concerning that as if is like we basically can become extinct if we aren't careful about like making making sure we maintain genetic diversity. So the ways in which this is also important is sexual selection. So PGD, as I touched on before, it's very closely tied to in vitro fertilization. It's when you take the sperm and the egg from a parent, two parents, and you combine them in a lab to make it so that they are either a boy or a girl, and you can decide that based upon after they're, after they're already made. It also checks for diseases, like if, I, if you know that one of the parents has Huntington's disease, you can check for that based off the genetic code. Makes it so that, that way the kids are uh, not gonna have that disease and like ruin their life. That's known as embryo profiling. This was first known in the 1980s, but where this does come across a moral debate is destroying the embryos, which is what religion opposes to, because they say like you're de you're taking away that embryo's like chance at life. So this right here creates about ten or twelve embryos, and then destroys the damaged ones or the undesired ones. So that comes across the debate, as you can assume. And this right here is an image of how PGD ends up working. So you guys can look at that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So infanticide, this is pretty brutal. It's once they're born, you kill them. Uh, it's been happening forever. Like there's been proof of it with the Greeks, with the Romans. When they couldn't, serve, like when they got pregnant, but they couldn't uh, like maintain another ch child, they left them out on the street. 
hoping somebody would take them or they would die. This still happens in modern day Bolivia, so it's like it's a pretty it's like been a prevalent method of sexual selection for a long time. Um, it's also a method of survival. Like if you can't afford to have food for a kid, then you can have another kid and they continue to breastfeed their child up until eight, nine, ten years old. That's happening in Bolivia today. So that's kind of another purpose of infanticide. But it's a pretty, as I said, brutal way of sexual selection. Genetic engineering would make it so that you would not have to choose between like killing a kid or killing embryos. It only makes the embryos that you desire. So in terms of sexual selection, it would put hormones into the genes of the child. And if they are not, if they were like meant to be a, man, a boy, and then you put the female hormones in there, it would make, perform a sex change on the cell and make it a girl. It's a very new technology in the United States and the EU. It has not been approved for testing on viable embryos, which is embryos that would like be allowed to develop. But it's been suspected to have been done in China, so that's kind of another debate. And then it does not create any unwanted embryos, so that way you don't get into a debate about, oh, you're killing embryos that had a chance at life. It only makes embryos that the parents desire and that are healthy. So some ramifications from this new technology as I touched on earlier, evolution. So you're taking away the chance of the human genome to modify because if you only allow certain genomes to, certain alleles to survive, then there's no mixing of alleles, there's no, and there's gonna be no mutations of the alleles. So this comes into a discussion about which alleles are bad enough to get rid of, like which diseases are, which physical ailments, and then becomes a discussion about who ends up deciding this. So that will be touched on later. Religion plays a huge role in this. As you guys know, in like politics in the United States, there's a lot of like evangelical conservatives and stuff who are voting with religion at, at mind. So then a lot of terms that are thrown like terms that are commonly thrown around are playing God, because like you're deciding like God's you're taking away God's right of deciding like if you're gonna be a boy or a girl. So that's a major opposition they have to it. Um, they kind of, like, Christianity opposes this, like they do abortion, and then this is a quote from the Bible, the first Corinthians book, that uh, as what they normally like quote when saying this is wrong. It basically says that you shouldn't take the flesh from another animal and put it into a human, or vice versa, which genome and flesh, they're kind of using as synonyms there, but kind of shows the religion, the religious debate there. So countries have different stances on this, the United States does not allow testing on viable embryos or non-viable embryos, but that's with USA funded money. So like from the NIH or different government uh, agencies, but there are private agencies that are funding this. There was one done in Oregon actually last year on a non-viable embryo, but it is necessary to further the research is testing on non-viable embryos to determine if it is safe to one day use. And China is allegedly funding research on viable embryos. It's been reported that they give birth, or they, like one of their labs produced an embryo that was genetically engineered. So this is a massive part of like global debate currently. So, because there, there's been talks at the UN about why this is not allowed and how it's going against previous uh, agreements that the countries have. So that could be that's like a big problem with this. So some solutions to this are to allow each country to make its own laws. So this would, but this then makes like allies would have to follow suit because like if the United States decides one thing, a less powerful ally might be pressured to fall in suit. So that way, like it kind of just like, then it becomes like divided, like two sides. Some would say yes, some would say no. It also turns into an economical race because there's huge economical benefits from this where if you could, promise a really rich person, like I'm gonna get you exactly what you want out of your kid, then they can go and pay another country to do this, which would then give a massive boost to their economy. And also the lawmakers' knowledge. I don't know if you guys remember the Mark Zuckerberg trial, where Congress had like a very shocking lack of knowledge about technology and the way in which Facebook worked. So this would most likely happen with genetic engineering because, well, there's a very low likelihood that if they couldn't understand the internet, they're gonna understand like very complex biological details. So it becomes a thing where Congress isn't prepared to make the decisions that are necessary. So a new proposal 
is that the UN, like a UN appointed group of scientists would be in charge of creating all these laws. They would not be affiliated with their country, so that way no country has any sway over it. It would just be the top people in the field would be making the decisions on what alleles are okay to work on, what alleles aren't, to what extent is the technology allowed. Um, and, and then also funding wise, like you can't say the United States would pull their funding because they're just they're non-affiliated scientists. So that way they would just be able to make decisions based off what they think is best for science and it would be nonpartisan and just it would be like the leaders in the field who are the most educated in the field. So that way every decision is made with the most knowledge that we have available in the world currently at play. So that is a very popular uh, current like proposition to what the problem would be. The UN has a meeting on this, I believe coming up in 2020. So this is a, it's kind of gaining steam and we'll see where that goes. So a summary is like looking at what's a humane way to do these things, like genetic engineering versus PGD versus infanticide. Who makes the rules, the ethical, opposi the ethical opposition to this, why they oppose it, and if you understand all that, you understand all of genetic engineering. So, thank you. Yes, Gus. Um, recently, there was a Rice professor who did research in China on this. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any comments about that? Like whether he should be, like, I don't know, is it like, because it's technically illegal in the US, right? Uh, it is illegal in the United States. I don't believe he broke any laws by doing this because it was research performed in another country. Right. He is currently, like, not being shunned by the scientific community, but he is like, they're questioning his motives behind it. Yeah. So it's kind of also putting pressure on the United States to change his laws. So it's an interesting step in my direction towards more research on the field. Well, to what extent can you currently test for and then get rid of embryos that you don't want? So there's about 500 diseases that we currently know that are like, single genome or like a single allele strand where we can test for it, determine if they have it, and then get rid of it. So what they do is it's called embryo mapping. They test the parents and their immediate family for what diseases they have, what they what they carry. And then they test the baby, they cross test the baby for what they or the embryo rather, for if they have like say your father has Huntington's disease. So then they test the embryo for Huntington's and there's about 500 diseases for that, plus sex. So those are about the major things that they will work on in testing. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you guys. I'd like to rest you there.